Well, hello, hello there. there. Welcome to this quick troubleshooting slash upgrading video. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. As you can see on this interesting print, I've been having some extreme layer shifting problems on my Sandu S8 in the background here. And today we're gonna try to tackle that. For the past weeks, I've been trying to fix everything wrong with this printer, including a new fan shroud that you can see there. I've changed the part cooling fan and I've even flipped the belts in the right direction. They were flat side to flat side and not teeth to teeth. So I thought that it was flipping causing the layer shifts, but that was not the problem apparently. And I even swapped the electronics fan for a silent Noctua fan after the layer shifts. After I corrected the belts and readjusted the Y steps, which is the equivalent to E steps for the extruder, I still wasn't able to get rid of these layer shifts. My next guess then was that maybe the stepper motor for the print bed was running too hot and thus slipping. So I temporarily put the little fan that was delivered with my E3D hotten here next to it. It didn't do a lot but it helped a bit with temperatures and I did still not see any results. I noticed however that the stepper drivers got really really hot. To solve that I put the little Noctua fan I put in the enclosure right on top of the heat sinks, but that didn't do shit. I didn't give up yet though, so I tried to swap the 8-bit board in there for, for this SKR Mini E3 V3, which I had repaired by the electronics guys at work. The swap standalone does work again, but for some reason the USB port doesn't seem to be working, so I had to come up with something a little bit exotic. I found the old Creality V4.2.2 board from the former Ender 3 V2 and I put that into the Sunlu S8 Pro which worked rather well but I didn't have enough fan ports, I was missing one. My problem with this board is that the two controllable fans are hardwired to the same pin. So if I wanted to turn on the part fan for example, it would turn on the Holland fan at the same time. It does have a always powered on 24 volt terminal but I didn't want that to be on the fan because I sleep right here so that would be quite annoying. So what's the next best thing? Buy another SKR Mini E3 V3 for 60 bucks? Hell nah! Use the old board as an auxiliary board Hell yeah, yeah! So we compile another piece of firmware for both boards, flash them and good to go right? Wrong. While the V4.2.2 is flashed via the SD card, the 8-bit board is not. Which I forgot last night and tried to flash it via the SD card for about an hour. <laughs> before I realized it's Arduino based and I have to flash it via the command prompt via SSH connection to the Pi. To flash the V4.2.2 you have to format the SD card to FAT32 and put on the root of the SD card your firmware.bin but make sure to rename it to something that the board doesn't already know because it remembers the last name of firmware you gave so name it firmware101.bin or something like that. After we flashed both of them, connected both of them, I was pretty clueless as to how to use both of them now. And that's where Dre Duvinic comes in. I found this video of him, which I'll be linking here somewhere, in which he rudimentarily shows how to uh, configure both boards, which tremendously helped me find the right settings. So shout out to him at this point, I was really demotivated to do this. We basically have to, in the printer.cfg that we have two boards, one, the normal MCU that is already configured, and two, either auxiliary board or Z board. If you have three main boards, you can use all three uh, MCU, Z board, and auxiliary board, but I only needed one. When I first did that, Clipper started throwing random errors, not connecting properly, and it turns out you have to mention them using their path, not their ID, which changes depending on which USB port you use. I use the top left and the lower right, but it depends what you want to use. If you then have configured everything to your liking, you have to save and restart. And if Clipper or Clippy still doesn't connect, you have to unplug and replug both boards so it works again. It's pretty janky, but as you can see, it does work. I even did a first layer test, which as you can see, went pretty well. 
aside from where I touched the hot bed and it came all up but that's not the problem. This print right here was the one that made me notice the layer shifts. After that I printed the helmet which you just saw and if this repair doesn't work I'm pretty much out of ideas and need help by somebody. So please ask away or just give me tips on something. I did however learn a lot for dual MCU in, the, in this process. I might incorporate it into the Voron I'm trying to build. So it will be a custom thing. I don't know. The next video will be part two of my armor build log because that armor has to get near a finished state this year for the Gamescom. And with that, see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.